Hello, everybody. It is good to see you on this Wednesday or whenever you are joining in on this conversation. Um, as you can see, I'm all by myself today. And um, that's because uh, Robert had knee surgery, knee replacement. And so Bar Reverend Barb is out with him, taking care of him. And we are wishing him a speedy recovery and uh, Barb praying for her as well as she is the caregiver for Robert and nursing him back to health. And so I thought I would just jump on here um, just for a few minutes, just to kind of share our conversation about Sunday. You know, we've been in this four week series called Why? looking at some of the hard questions of our faith. And last week we had that really difficult question of, um, what do we do when God is silent? What do we do when God doesn't answer our prayers? And so this week we're going to finish the sermon series, kind of wrapping all of those thoughts and questions um, into one bundle and thinking about how does God answer prayer? And there is a huge hint. It is through our lives. And so I wanted to start uh, a little bit today by sharing um, just about the ways in which uh, we see God present in our world, right? Um, you know, as a kid, we are, are taught to kind of look, have our eyes opened a little bit more and to see um, that love around us. But as we get older, sometimes that worldview shrinks a little bit and we forget to have our eyes open to the ways in which God is fully at work around us and in our lives. And so sometimes we miss those ways in which God is answering our prayers. We talked last week a little bit about when it seems like God is silent, when we're dealing with really heavy stuff. Sometimes it, it takes a moment of us looking in the rearview mirror. Uh, looking back at our uh, at those hard times to be able to see the ways in which God was present. I, I know for my life, uh, when I've been going through hard times and it has felt isolating and alone and where God wasn't there or just felt like God was um, was silent, wasn't listening to my prayers. When I looked back at those times, I did see the way in which God was faithful and trustworthy and was right there with me in those moments answering prayers. And a lot of times it came through the lives of other people. You know, the lives of somebody um, giving me a call at just the right time to talk with me or on my knees um, praying and all of a sudden I would get a text or a card in the mail, or a meal that would show up to remind me that God was there with me and present with me. And Adam Hamilton shares a story like that uh, in, in his book, Why? And if you haven't gotten this yet, it is a very little book. You can even borrow mine after Sunday um, to read through it if you like. But he shares this story about a time when um, for their church, they would give out gifts to those who were without work. And so they knew who those people were in their congregation. They had a team together to give out a little gift to let them know that they weren't alone and that God hadn't forgotten about them. And so after service on Sunday, Adam was sitting down and he had a list of people. And so he called the first person on his list that he was then going to go and deliver this gift to. And he gets a hold of a woman. And as soon as he says to her, hi, this is Adam Hamilton. And I was just calling. I have a gift to bring to you because we want you to know that God hasn't forgotten you and God is still with you. She just starts to cry. And he can't understand why she is crying. And they kind of finish the conversation. Um, and she says, come on over and I'll explain. And so he comes over to her house and she's sharing with him how hard this time in her life was, how dark things had been for her. And even that morning as she watched online, watching um, the service happen, she had this prayer and she wrote this prayer down and it, it was talking about, you know, God, why have you left me alone? Where are you? I, I need to know that you are faithful, that you see me, that you haven't forgotten about me. And she said, as soon as she stopped writing that prayer, her phone rang and it was Adam Hamilton sharing with her that she was seen 
and that God hadn't forgotten about her. And so it was an answer to prayer. Now, Adam Hamilton didn't know that when he was picking up that phone that he was answering her prayer in that moment. What he was just doing was being faithful, faithful to who God has called him to be and being available to going out and to doing the things that God had called him to do, which is to live out that life of love and faith. And so it's the same for us as well. You know, when we live out our faith, when we are doing what God wants us to do, when we are just kind of paying attention a little bit more and seeing um, people around us, having our eyes actually open to the hurts and needs around us, and then reacting to that, we actually get to be that answer to someone's prayer. And sometimes we'll never know about it, right? Like sometimes we will never hear about how somebody was touched in that moment because of our gift or about their prayer that they had that all of a sudden uh, they realized that God loved them and was with them. It was that answer to prayer. Sometimes we will never know that. But in those moments that we do get to see a glimpse of that, boy, what a blessing that is for us how that shows us that God is using us in those places to be able to bring about goodness and love and to actually let somebody know that God is with them and present with them just because we are responding and we're living out the way that we're called to live. So this Sunday, this Sunday is World Communion Sunday. It is a holiday that's been around within the churches since 1940 is when it finally was adopted by um, a lot of Christian denominations. And it is a Sunday where we join together with other Christians around the world, remembering that together, even though we are apart, we're not in the same space, that there's this holy mystery when we take communion together, when we break the bread and we drink the cup and we remember the gift and the words and the life of Jesus Christ. In that holy mystery, we are joined together with the communion of saints, with those who are present all around the world doing that same thing, remembering who Jesus is, as well as those who have lived before us and who will come after us. We remember that we are part of this body of Christ called to live out our faith, to be the hands and feet of God in the world. And by being the hands and feet of God in the world, we are reminded that we are called to go out and to live in a way that answers people's prayers. And so this Sunday, we'll be joining together online in the sanctuary, maybe even during the week, if you watch during the week, um, we're going to be joining together with that holy mystery and that holy sacrament uh, of remembering Jesus's life. And in that, we are filled up. We are filled with God's spirit, with God's presence. We remember how God has been faithful to us. We remember the words and teachings of Jesus, the way that he lived his life and the way that he sacrificed for others and for us. So we are filled up with that. And then, then we are called to go out and to do to live, to be the body of Christ. So we come and we are filled up and we have that moment of gratitude. And then we remember that we are to be spilling out into the world, that as that Holy Spirit has poured into our lives to go out and to share that love and grace with others. And this Sunday, we're actually going to have an opportunity to do just that. We are um, after the nine o'clock service. So in between that nine and 1030 service, about 10 o'clock, we're going to be packing mana bags, those bags that have um, food in them and um, socks and other things for our homeless siblings in the Denver metro area. And a lot of you have had these in your cars and been able to hand those out when you've seen a homeless person on a corner. But this Sunday, we are going to be packing those manna bags together. And then we're going to pray a blessing over them. And we're going to go out into the city and into the community. And we are going to go and we are going to deliver these manna bags 
to, to a people who are in need. So we are going to be packing and then going out and sharing, being um, the hands and feet of God in our world. So I hope that you will put that on your calendar, that you'll be able to do that. And if you're not able to do that and you live somewhere else or you're on vacation or whatever, that you think of some way some way in which you can respond to that gift that God has given to you, some way where you can live into that space where God is calling you to be the hands and feet, the answers to people's prayers in the world. So I look forward to continuing this conversation with you about how God answers prayers through us um, and the ways in which sometimes we see and sometimes we don't see how God is at work, but knowing that God is with us and is faithful helps move us into that space of care and love and grace for others and how we're called to be set apart um, and, and to do that good work in the world. So I look forward to seeing you Sunday. I would love to hear your stories about how God has answered your prayers um, or how you were an answer to somebody else's prayer. So put those in the comments. Um, send me an email, Cody at ParkerUMC.org. Would love to hear about how God has answered your prayers how you've been an answer to other people's prayers, because that encourages us. It helps us to see God at work in our world. Until then, my friends, may God bless you and keep you, and may God's face shine upon you as you live out your life in a way that is a blessing to others and shares God's unconditional love and goodness with those that you meet. God bless you.